Hello, um, so uh, is Simon here? Simon? Yep, hello. So uh, yesterday in the lightning talk, uh, Simon uh, showed us uh, paper tapes uh, with music for, for, the, for the music box, right? And that, that made me want to talk to you about paper tape and music as well, but quite the opposite. Uh, well, not, not the opposite, well, I don't know. So uh, let me just show you that. Um, uh, a few years ago, well, 10 years ago, uh, I studied engineering, and uh, at Univers University of Sao Paulo, um, there's like, it's very famous that there was a computer designed there in 1971. Uh, it, it was for, for a time, was considered the first Brazilian computer. Afterwards, they discovered that there was, and some, some people discovered that there was another computer 10 years earlier designed in Brazil as well. But this one is pretty famous, it's called the Ugly Duckling Computer. Uh, it's called like that because the Navy uh, was planning to have a computer designed by another university in Brazil and the, the Navy one would be called the White Swan because it, that's the name of the... the that, that's something related to, to, to the Navy, I'm sorry. Uh, so the, the people from, from the University of São Paulo decided to call it the Navy the thing, like the, just the cheapest one. Uh, but it worked, and the other one didn't happen, so this one was pretty uh, pioneer. Um, so, what does it have to do with music? Well, um, and graphics. <laughs> uh, so, uh, these are paper tapes that were used for storing the computer programs. And uh, this is a, a scan of a manual of the assembler that they developed for the machine. And, and I got some of these paper tapes. Uh, this one specifically I transcribed by, just by looking at the image and what is a, a hole is a one, what is a lack of a hole is a zero. Uh, and by uh, reading that I could see a tiny example program to run on a, on a computer. Uh, by the way, this was all emulated on MAME, the multi game machine emulator, a free software project for historical preservation of old computers. Um, so we can run it on the browser. So this here is a JavaScript build of MAME running on the browser, uh, running that program from that image. Um, uh, so it's launching the emulator and downloading the image of the punch tapes and it's going to run here. I'm not sure how long. Yeah, so this is the program running on the computer from the side. Not 1971. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and then, what does it have to do with music? Uh, this professor uh, uh, designed a synthesizer in 1975, and the other professor convinced him to add a digital control interface to the synth so that the computer could send commands to play music on the synth. And he's got um, he's got a web page with photos of the synthesizer and the story and the modules and you could insert your waveform manually over there with the sliders and save that to a bank and then use that, that uh, sound. You could also upload this kind of waveform through the, the data tape, through the digital interface, using the computer. Um, and these are some example programs, and he's got a box full of paper tapes. Uh, so uh, we were trying to digitize these ta paper tapes as well, but doing it by hand, like looking at the holes is very hard. So I was trying to find ways to read that. One of the ways was to write a program to use OpenCV to analyze the image and detect the circles and compensate for the angle of the tape and so on. And it kind of worked. Um, <coughs> uh, 
so I have a, a video channel on YouTube and it's in Portuguese, sorry, but sometimes I have subtitles in English uh, where I talk about all this stuff and here I show the program running. So this is the OpenCV program. You load an image and it apply uh, it, it it removes color and then apply a uh, Gaussian blur to reduce noise and then applies the circle detection uh, transform a uh, uh, Hof transform for detection of circles of a specific range of uh, radius that I expect them to be and then once they are detected uh, they are some of them are not detected. You, you can see that it failed for some of them, but as I know the, the average distance, um, I can fill the grid with the ones that were missing. So it, it, it's capable of filling the, the gaps. All right, and here you have all of them. And then with that, I can extract the data dump from the tape. But this is nice, it works, but it's not very practical because you have these paper tape rolls that you would have to be scanning just like a book. Like every, every tiny bit of the tape is like a page in a book. So I went after trying to build my own reader for that. Uh, but it's a very finicky, hard mechanical thing to build with those light sensing uh, devices pretty well aligned and it's very tiny so it didn't work well but I had the luck of finding a real reader from 1974 so there's there's this museum that is being set up at university of Sao Paulo, and they found this box that was donated to them, and it's basically a paper tape reader from 1974 from the same lab that developed the computer, and it was just hanging out there in, in so that, that, yeah. So I opened this, and it came with a technical manual describing all the, the electronic el el electrical signaling and protocol and I was ma able to make it work. With an Arduino to, to read the data. So this is the, the machine reading the tape. And now I would like to play the songs that the synthesizer used to play. Uh, we've got the source code in assembly language. In, in some tapes. We also have the binary executables in other tapes, binary tapes, and, um, and we also have data tapes with the music sheet for all, all, of, all, all of the voices. The instrument was um, monophonic, so you only hear one note at a time. It only plays one note at a time, but you can record several passes, so it would uh, play a one kilohertz uh, control um, reference signal in the left channel and in the right channel you would have the actual sound from the synth and then you would play again with a different data tape using that one kilohertz signal in the uh, interrupt uh, pin of the digital interface so that it would interrupt the CPU a thousand times per, uh, per second and then the interrupt handling routine would make sure that the second voice is playing in sync with the first one and you could do it several times with overdubbing and they just did it four times the, the fifth voice would be crappy be because of the amount of noise that would get added up after each new recording so the professor has got in his website uh, mp3 files that were generated from from real cassette tapes that were recorded back then. So this is the real thing, it's not an emulator, this is the real thing.
That's it. Thank you. I've been doing it on my free time during the last two or two and a half years. Yeah. That there's lots of uh, documents scanned and published to the Internet Archive because I got all of the master thesis from all of the professors because each one worked on one module. Like there, there's like core memory, there's a whole thesis about that. And then there's like the CPU design and the the I.O. interface, each, each block of the system was done by a different professor, uh, back then like a, 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 a master's uh, student. So I digitized everything and published on the Internet Archive as well. Yeah. So I can't read anymore, I'll send them to you. But, uh, <laughs> doesn't mean you'll want to read them though. Uh, but, um, I mean, how much does this ugly duckling computer cost? It must have been you know, like 15 billion pesetas or whatever they were using at the time. Um, I mean, so this was a really, really expensive piece of music we just heard. That's fabulous. Oh, yeah? I should appreciate that. I don't know the But it was, like, probably expensive back then. Yeah. It, uh, the project was designed by students in the master's program. Uh, the professor was from uh, Syracuse in the U.S., and he came, uh, he was an IBM specialist who came to Brazil to teach at the University of Sao Paulo. And he uh, had this uh, digital design, um, computer digital design course, where he taught uh, how CPUs work, how computers work. And uh, an assignment for the students was to design a computer, a uh, CPU. And so there, there were several designs, and the best one was this one. And then when the, the director of the, universe, of the um, engineering school uh, got um, what was informed by the fact that the Navy was going to probably do a computer uh, with the other engineering school, there was this uh, challenge to do it faster. And, you know, the students did it. We just got to pay for them to build the real thing. So they did it. <laughs> question? Yeah. Uh, an another question is, um, uh, apparently you, you started out doing this to be able to run the programs in your simulator, right? And, uh, but do you have a simulator for the uh, synthesizer as well? Uh, because this would be the missing next step to actually yeah. regenerate the music digitally. Yeah, so the, the, the professor... Um, I, I, I I built a replica of the of the computer, a, a panel, a laser cut. I actually drawn on Inkscape, laser cuts, and so on, with toggles, switches, and lamps to be able to 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 run the emulator inside of an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. Um, the emulator right now just runs the the computer code, uh, but not the synth. Uh, simulation, because I don't know exactly all the details about the synth. But the professor, I showed him the, this this uh, replica, and and he provided me two um, notebooks of his own uh, with all of the designs. But it's not complete. It's like there were several sketches made on pencil, all the circuits and so on. But there's no official documentation of what was really really built. Uh, but just uh, a couple days ago, he mailed me. He emailed me, um, asking for the the notebooks back because it's with me. Yeah, I'm still scanning them. <laughs> Not enough time to scan them all, right? Um, so I, I gotta give it back to him. But he's interested in that because he's going to present this uh, synth in a, in a, in a, a conference for weird or rare electronic. Uh, equipment. It exists, and I asked him, uh, does it work? He said, well, I tried to turn it on a while ago, and uh, it kind of did, did not work, so I gave up. They say, how long ago? Uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> but now, uh, two days ago, he said to me that he actually tried again, and it's kind of working. There's some portions that are, but, but it, it plays. So he's going to showcase this next Saturday in Brazil, if anyone wants to show up. <laughs> yeah.
I'll try to record some videos and have English subtitles. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Frank. I'm the lead developer on FontForge. Um, and when I say lead, that doesn't mean that there are a bunch of people following me. It's, you know, it's a pretty small crowd. But anyway, um, I just wanted to give a brief update on all the stuff that's happened with FontForge the last six months. Basically, I merged some pull requests. Uh, things have been a little behind. I've had a lot of stuff going on, um, but I just wanted to talk about you know the, the next steps. Um, so you know, I'm always trying to look for low-hanging fruit, and I always you know like to be efficient with things. And so, um, how many people here use FontForge on a regular basis right now? FontForge. That sounds like a no. <laughs> Okay, so of you all, how many of you, if we added support for variable fonts, would actually use that? Okay, and if we added support for color fonts, how many people would use that? Right, that's what I thought. And as it happens, color fonts are a little bit easier to implement than, uh, than variable fonts. So anyway, that's, that's sort of on the agenda for this summer, depending on how my schedule looks. Um, but, uh, but, you know, you never want to do things twice. And, you know, so I'm trying to see how other people do with this. I know there are a lot of different models with other, you know, typeface design packages. Who knows, it may even not stick the second time. I, you know, I hope it does, but... Uh, so we're going to wait on that, see how it goes. Um, uh, I don't know if... I don't know if you all remember it, there was this great uh, comic strip about 10 or 15 years ago, it's a terrorist training camp, and there's this guy with an explosive jacket on, and he's telling his students, now uh, watch closely because I'm only going to do this once. And implementing variable fonts in FontForge is definitely one of those things. You know, like there's certain things you don't mind doing twice, like sometimes I eat lunch twice because I like eating lunch, but this is not something I'm doing twice, so we're going to see how it goes. Um, I thought you know, since we have some time, does anybody here have a pull request or a problem or a question that has been unresolved for over six months? Uh, I can fix other pieces of software too, but um, yes. What's that? Yeah, lots of things have broken in Homebrew. That we didn't, there was no regression in our code base, but working with Homebrew has become more and more difficult. Um, and I'm not a Macintosh user. Like if you go, go to Typo Labs there, I'm probably the only person there without a Macintosh. I come here, there are like one or two. And so I know that's a big part of our user base, and I'd like to support it. It's just, you know, it's, it's not the platform I'm on every day. And we really need, if anybody wants to help out, we'd love to have a Homebrew expert to, you know, get that work as much as possible. The GUI will never work again with Homebrew, as far as I can tell, but, you know, we'll definitely like to support that. I mean, best or worst case, you could run a virtual, for headless stuff, running a virtual machine isn't that bad, is it? Okay, I guess it's pretty bad, but anyway. <laughs> so, that's on my list, but it's just, it's so hard to get to things sometimes. You know, I've got a class reunion coming up, and, um, you know, which... <laughs> Well, no, it's awful because then, you, you know, you know everybody else is going to have a fancy new car, particularly at my high school, so you have to buy a fancier new car, and then you show up with a Rolls Royce, and still somebody shows up with a McLaren. So I've got to do a lot of build, you know, paid work and everything before then, but this is on the list. Um, let's see, what else? I thought I had more to say. I, it really shows when you haven't gotten anything done, doesn't it? Anyway, um, that's all I have. I'll uh, <laughs> see you all next. So yeah, what, who, how are we? Uh, so we are all students uh, at the Artes University of Arts in the Netherlands, uh, where Rul teaches uh, and gave a presentation on that yesterday. And I'm Einar, and this is Emma. Yeah, so, uh, and then there's also Marius, but he couldn't come um, for different reasons. Um, so we're kind of like a, a pipeline collective sort of trying to figure things out, um, group of students. Uh, we got together because we were almost told to, I guess, with the project for um, the, the open source software review, because we had to work in groups. Um, but we found that to actually be quite productive, so that's why we've kind of stuck with it and formed a club. Um, so the thick 
Club Pub is the project that we worked on with the open source reviews. So the whole class would get together and do these reviews um, from like a quite an eclectic range of um, programs that you guys here did. Um, and yeah, I don't want to... Yeah, and then the new project we're working on that we're going to talk a bit about is sort of the working title is The Long Tail slash The Deep Spider Web which we'll get to later on. Uh, so yeah, I think we start talking about Thick Pub. Uh, yeah, Jonathan, the website. And you can just run through yeah. it. Uh, yeah, so Thick Pub is a multimedia platform uh, that has sort of a collection of reviews on Floss software. Uh, created by the student, but as the project is also open source, anybody can contribute and read the reviews. And we thought of this idea that the publication would also reflect the software. So software that is only available online, you can only read in the web version, while software that you have to download and install can only be uh, printed. And the same as for platform, so software that only works on Mac, you can only view on Mac. And software that is only on Windows, you can only view on Windows, etc. But as everybody in our class had a Mac OS, everything works on our computer. Uh, but you guys might see it, see it a bit differently. Um, oh, yeah. And then there was this whole discussion in about this free Libre versus free beer discussion. So software that is free as in software, you can uh, you get like a true PDF that you can edit and mess with. As same in the web version that you can really like highlight the code or the text. Uh, while the free as in beer software, the PDFs get all bitmapped. So you can't really copy or change anything from it. And in the web version, you can't really uh, highlight anything. I mean, you can go into the developer console and steal it, but that's all. But also, like, um, as like a disclaimer, there are, there are things that are wrong within the reviews because we didn't write them all. So if you find something that you get offended by, that's not our fault. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but we also brought one of the publications with us, which you're welcome to kind of pass around, take a look at. Um, there were, like, we printed out all of them, but this one's for Mac specifically, because that's what we've got with us. Um, okay, and then... Yeah, maybe sort of on technical sides, what we used, uh, most of this was developed through Python 3. And for the website, we used the Yinya 2 templating engine. Uh, and to make the print, we originally attempted with uh, LaTeX, which went horribly wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, shit. I removed the USB. Oh, it's in there. Uh, yeah. And then we used VC print and image magic and PDF unite uh, to make the print version. Yeah. So now on to our more recent adventures. That's a long tail slash deep spider web. We might just start with sort of a video introduction. Um, you can see the smallest. So this project is kind of originating around looking at different types of digital media for, so um, and like digital culture. So for us, we were all quite interested in, I think it's quite hard not to be interested in these videos. Um, and then like other people are doing works, um, looking at, I don't know, um, what, what would, what's Catherine doing? She's doing the... Cam yeah, like cam girls as well. So there's quite another, like an eclectic range of things. Um, but we were interested in these for 
a lot of different reasons. First of all, I guess, like, why why do they exist? Like, what are they doing? And how much impact are these having on the watchers? But also, like, they're getting millions of views. So we were curious, like, is it for bots? Is it made by bots? Like, how many children's, children are watching these? And kind of trying to understand it is near on impossible. So we, we're trying to look at different... Uh, writings about it so looking at um, the crapularity concept and then also um, that uh, like writings from people that seem to think that they know what's going on um, but yeah I really like we've watched tens and hundreds of these videos and I really wouldn't advise doing that um, don't. don't do it and um, so what we've tried to do so far is kind of map out what we think we're seeing so, for example, looking at the characters and tropes, um, Spider-Man and Elsa are very much prominent in this. Um, and then also looking at these sort of different ways that these videos are being created, so whether that's 2D, uh, um, 2D worlds, uh, 3D worlds, or sort of stop motion or even like real-life actors, all of them sort of fit in the same bubble of this, yeah, this we've, yeah, deep spider web thing. Um, and then I guess from that we're trying to figure out how best to describe it further or kind of get our heads around it. Um, so I think we're looking at using the language that these videos um, sort of title themselves with, these sort of endless strings of um, hashtags in a sense, which is also what these videos are, they're kind of like visual hashtags, like you put a Spider-Man with an Elsa and you're going to get like 10 million views. Um, so so now we're trying to scrape through YouTube um, the titles and the descriptions of each of these videos and then try and use these words in order to kind of talk about itself in a sense. Um, and like looking at the textures as well is super interesting because it's also the same character, like the same models, but it's like mods in a sense because of this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is there much more? And yeah, maybe to explain a bit what you were seeing. So yeah, the first was uh, sort of a graph on the tropes and characters we found in videos. Uh, this one. That is really laggy. Uh, and this is sort of a visual mapping of the environments that exist in. And then this was a field guide to Spider-Man on YouTube and sort of the environments and yeah, styles of Spider-Man you can find. Uh, so I mean, you can find him in the wilderness, recognized by a more basic rendering of textures, cliff, wild animals battling each other, twisted and unpredictable storylines play out there, stay alert. Uh, Yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any... first with sort of these net generators, but they weren't really fitting on paper as we wanted to make a poster uh, in the time, time frame we had to work with. So. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, so our class as a whole reviewed all the softwares, but each individual reviewed I think four softwares. So together we have like a review, like hundred reviews or so. Yeah, hundred and five. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to show you a little uh, project we had in Switzerland. And it's uh, related to community work, but also generative design. 
Uh, so I basically just came up with uh, the presentation today and with the idea of having a talk. So it's really low tech. So I go basically go just through the slides. Um, so that was the vision we had. So like every second year, either way in Germany or in um, the Netherlands, there is a like a hacker community camp, and we wanted to have something similar in Switzerland. They are usually really big, like they are thousands of people, and we knew we have like a very diverse uh, situation with groups and people in Switzerland so we first needed to gather them somehow and bring them as a community to work so we thought in a much uh, like smaller scale so we came together a couple people to organize this hacker camp and uh, like with the target like of uniting the the community so and for that reason we, we had to basically do design somehow to communicate so a couple friends uh, we came together and did the first like sketches like really rough and this was all made like in a traditional way just like putting stuff really quickly together so and then we thought yeah let's like somehow here we we have this like hacker coding style we we wanted to go through and a friend of us came up with like the idea he wants to do something with cellular automators uh, if that's the correct English term so um, we started like f from these really rough sketches we started direct go to like to code so to have a different design approach so that it is not like this static generation like where we have to draw by hand or like o operate with a normal layout or software where we had to deal with like uh, ma manual work especially with this uh, idea of this uh, cellular automators so we, we basically defined uh, some structures what What's the design about? So this is um, like the, the website and this shows like this cellular automata idea. So the, the corporate design was really like basic. So we had just like the cellular automata with two kind of uh, um, characters and two um, colors. So, and because it's about communication, you should probably also have some typer. So, Actually, yeah, it's hard actually to see something, but yeah, okay, let's switch uh, colors. Um, yeah, let's do it black and white, so uh, you see it better. So it's um, it's like this very simple monotypo uh, grid and uh, with, with this uh, 3D shade kind of thing, just by stencing out uh, knocking out the uh, one uh, line of characters. Okay, and so basically everything like the collaboration happened on the on the GitHub, and we uh, shared code and uh, like tried to like develop the design with together with with the code. So, and like on the community side, in the meanwhile, we organized to like to raise some money. We, we basically sold tickets ahead so that we were able to like bring it to life and uh, rent a place and everything. So we even had like Mitch Oldman, like from the hacker community or like maker community to participate at our camp. And so, it, it basically went on and on. So from this like first generator, we made first stickers and the, the generator came basically more and more to life. So, um, and we realized, so we were just like a, a small team of, uh, of enthusiasts and 
most of the people, of course, were not graphic designer and they had nothing to do with graphic design at all. But the, the need for graphic design was kind of high because we had to bring all these groups together. And so they started to fiddle around with this system. So what you see here is, is a kind of a letter uh, a person did and I, I, they wanted to, to send it out to, to people like that and we were like, yeah, probably we just do a little bit like, like, like how, how to like do it proper, in a proper way so that you basically also are able to print it without like using all the ink. So we, we kind of helped them like using the generator and and do it in a in a little bit more proper way but the key was so we basically just like had this generator i, sh I show you later and we were just able to pass that design on as a link so the the whole design is encoded as a link so you are basically able to really easily share it also with social media you, you can just like type something and and send it off so if you have something like that made for your 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 organizers then you can just send them and they can uh, just uh, change the text so there were like many of these requests we had to fulfill so there was also like a batch like for uh, for the name tag so they they produced pcbs and for the pcb the it's looking more or less like that. These are LEDs with, with buttons on it. So you can do like this, uh, this uh, batch thing with, with animations and stuff. So, and they had to package up and they came with this, uh, with this design. Oh, let, let's do it like that. That was like, again, yeah, probably we can. I, I mean, they already, I mean, these are not graphic designers and they, even though they are not graphic designers with this generator, they were able to get there, so that's already like a huge step, but then you can help them and you probably suggest a little bit a different uh, design and then they are kind of happy because they just can print it out from the website or do a PDF and in the end the package was just looking like that. So, same for ticketing, so that was the first ticket I received and the guy was just like, oh, I really set it up this amazing pre-tix uh, system to sell the tickets. This is how the, the, the ticket looks like. And then you have to jump in and probably like say, yeah, well, uh, can we talk about it? And what, what are you, your, like, like what are you technically able to do? And then he told me, yeah, you can just put a, a PDF in the background. So, all right, so why don't we put that one in the background? And then he was like, yeah, well, uh, I can put that in the background, but uh, then I have to place the, the, the text still on it. And then, uh, well, good, I, I do that for you. So I had to send him his, his own configuration. So I just did it blind and it worked out pretty well in the end. So the, the final ticket was more or less like that. So we still had the Helvetica Ariel thing in it. That was too hard for him, but at least um, it looked a little bit better than like before, like that one was the original. So in the end we had like, after many iterations, we had like basically this editor. And I'm going to show you quickly. This is basically, the editor we handed out to all the people who needed to do some stuff. Graphic wise, so you're basically, I mean it's a little bit, it's not like for everyone, but it's, it's the, the system is pretty simple, you just type, if you do a new line, you, you get also a new line and it's like, with all these, um, it's, it's with kind of randomness and so you can basically have different seeds so then you can like seed it till you think yeah that's okay. Uh, you can have different rules for the 
for the pattern in the background. You can also apply these different styles we had before. So for printing, for black and white, we had uh, also at one point like some kind of problems with um, with uh, environmental obligations. So we also did uh, one uh, for like like in green, so to to m make them uh, feel a little bit more welcome when we had to send in the proposal, and so on, on and so on. So the, there are many parameters you can uh, just like tweak and can. Uh, do it according to your design and if you are all set and fine you basically just go to print it and it should more or less look like you want to do it. Okay, so that's basically it and in the end we really had this camp. We're like a uh, hundred participants, uh, many young people were there and uh, signage everything was more or less according to corporate, corporate design. Um, with this idea, I also came up later for stuff for me. So everything, uh, for example, here I, I made a little label maker. So everything what you see is like um, encoded in the URL. So I don't have to take care about hosting or anything. So it's just easy to like send it off or print it or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks to the people who helped there. Okay, so, hello, uh, my name is Jean. So, um, I, I'm one of the game developers, and... Uh, uh, hello, uh, I'm Ariam, and uh, uh, yeah, we are Zumamo team. And we will presentation our project, and uh, uh, people ask us, ask us, uh, uh, what is, uh, how how is it going the small project? So, yeah, we presentation a little. Bit. So uh, I don't know if many of you know about this project. We presented a few years ago actually in a graphics meeting. So it's it's a movie, uh, and we are working on it, and we don't present it again to not be boring. Uh, but uh, so it's just like a status because people ask us for status. We are actually working uh, like all the time on this. So it's 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 more than just a hobby project. It's uh, uh, but we are kind of alone. And actually, Ariam is drawing everything alone. I will show you some uh, stuff. Like so that like, I will show you the the teaser when. Uh, when we originally presented, um, actually, I can make some sound. Right. <laughs> so, so this was when we originally presented. That was design changed since then. It's a mammoth. You know ma what mammoth is? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's why we changed the design. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, 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 it's a groundhog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but so since then, uh, we, we have been uh, working. And me, actually, I try to develop and I fix GIMP and everything. And uh, yeah, my, my, my main goal is to have GIMP be like st very stable and everything. So. To be used professionally, like that's one of the first stuff I, I, I did when was like when I, I started contributed because I fixed some crashes and stuff like that, uh, which were annoying. And um, so let's so how it looks like now. Okay, it's wait a second. Let's walk in ex except of work some works in progress. So wait. This project is uh, uh, all draw, uh, fully made with uh, free software, and uh, I draw with um, um, GIMP and um, uh, some sin. Uh, how to say? It? Uh, I I composite um, in Blender 
for some cuts. And now I, I this one is a GIMP motion, which is a plugin to to um, to do animation. And yeah, uh, now I'm using this um, GIMP motion to uh, line test. If you know, if someone does a bit of animation, you know, like exposition sheet, X sheet, or so stuff like that. So it looks like an X sheet, basically. And every layer is like one kind of layer of the animation. Uh, if you have ever seen like Disney, uh, like these machines, when, when before when they were used to, to draw, when they would do a movie, they would still also do frame by frame, but then they would have like transparent papers and they would put them one on, on the other and have a camera on this and photograph frame by frame. That's what the X sheet is. So we keep this concept, but it's uh, on computer. So yeah, I'm like, um, yeah, I can show you like this kind of stuff, for instance. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh. But, uh, okay, wait a oh. Okay, wait. Sorry, focus issue. to see the virus um, you know it's when you make an animation it's kind of a step-by-step -step process you do like the storyboard then you do the animatics so here's the animatics looks like it's basically an animatics is when you take just you scan the storyboard and you put them side by side and you can do some very simple compositing and that's more it's not finished but that's like a work in progress with animation so that's supposed to be Yeah, that timing changed a little, so. So, yeah, so, what do I have? Uh, yes. Okay, so, yeah, and yeah, actually, uh, Arium is, is uh, regularly, you can, okay, why is the mouse? Okay focus like we have like YouTube channel on li li uh, li you find Lila the Marmot uh, Lila is name of the it's, we make this in the context of a non-profit association but professionally so we crowdfund it which makes salaries and everything not much right now uh, but um, and since we use free software and Librat and everything, because uh, the goal is also the movies has to be released, you know, as Creative Commons uh, by SA and everything. So if you, you can find this kind of, uh, now she does regularly videos. It's like, it's not videos, uh, it's just see, seeing her walking. So some, some of the videos are like eight hours. So. Because it's, it's live streaming of just seeing him walking, and some, sometimes it's, it can be boring also, like because you just, you know. <laughs> Yeah, because you, you just, you just, you just, it's, you know. It's just, I started it because uh, I just wanted to notice I'm still work on this project. Yeah, so some people maybe want to know that, yeah, so. You, if, if someone, which is crazy uh, who watch all the all the video then uh, they can found uh, I make really many mistakes uh, on there uh. allows you to have like direct preview so it's like it's really good for line testing so yeah so yeah basically i think that's that's it that's to show a little bit how what what we have been doing and uh 
Yeah, basically a lot, lot of a uh, lot of drawing and for me, so also coding and everything. And yeah, we basically we we just complete. We sometimes do other projects because uh, we don't have a lot of crowdfunding for this. Don't like a lot of funding. Uh, so yeah, we did like a board game. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, like wait. Uh, Like, okay, this is laser printed stuff. Um, it was for, for another association and uh, oh yeah. some cards and, uh, you know. Oh, we designed this part and uh, the box on the recording for yeah, the Yeah, on the box, of course, it's yeah. printed. I mean, uh, laser, laser cut with Inkscape also, you know, it's like. Yeah, that's uh, so. Yeah, we do this kind of stuff, but uh, mostly we do, mostly we do the mammoth, and uh, yeah. Just show you some links if if you ever want. Uh, yeah, that's that was another talk somewhere. Okay, just show you the links. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That's uh, if you want to, <laughs> or follow us and everything, and, yeah. and fund, uh, <laughs> always help us uh, if you want, yeah. if you can. That's it. Okay. Oh yeah. If you have any questions, you can. When you well, every every year, every year we say this year. So. Yeah, I really, really want to finish this. Project, yeah, and, and I want to show, uh, show this project um, next in next year. Yeah, and I see. Prime is a project. Sorry. Four K project. Now. What? This is free. Yeah, so uh, image sometimes are bigger because yeah. when you do like background image, you need to have bigger because you do panning and stuff like that. But yeah. the the film, the render is in free. Is that what you were asking? Yeah, but the projector is 4K, so you can project really big on. Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you.